Welcome back to the program. Last week we talked a wee bit about what Aquamap are using as far as seismic machinery and systems is concerned. But we put it to the test. We went to an area which was reputedly totally dry and not a skerrick of water underneath. We put it to the test to just see how it's going to work. Okay, so we basically go and re record the data in the field on a standard audio recording device and then we bring it to a laptop in the office and uh, we uh, open up a new project in our uh, GeoSuite uh, software package. Uh, we just say uh, create a new project and then uh, we've got all this information about what you would like to call your site name, when it was done, uh, basically trigger sensitivity, seeing how, how the data gets pulled out of the recorded data sets. I just generally like to use a setting of three. And uh, you can put down a little bit of a description of the site, your uh, client's name, number and address, contact details, uh, seismic velocity, which I know to be 4,000 meters per second. And uh, we import the uh, data by uh, adding a line uh, of shots. And uh, each, each line has, can have a number of shots on it. So basically we uh, use some sort of a tree view sort of system. And then uh, on a particular shot point, we uh, simply import the wave file that we've, uh, that we've recorded. Uh, as an example, we've taken a few um, uh, uh, shots uh, on, on uh, Grand Murray Drennan's farm. And uh, this is what was recorded, a wave file. And I'll just say open. And it basically imports that wave file and then searches for all the uh, data points that we've collected and then it displays it. We've taken five blows of the hammer as uh, we did in the field and if I cl click on the uh, shot point this is more or less what we see. A uh, whole bunch of uh, data traces, uh, five of them to be precise where we've taken basically the average of those and uh, shown it as the black trace. Now the black trace is analyzed for its data content and it spits out an answer in the form of an analyzed signal. Uh, we repeat this process again and again um, for all the shot points that we've done. So we basically got a, a line, we add a new shot to it. And uh, on that particular shot, we uh, add a new wave. Same process, next wave file. And it uh, loads it and searches for the shot points and displays them. So you basically can have a look at that particular one again. It's more or less the same format. And then it spits out an answer in the form of a, an analyzed signal waveform. Uh, this is how we import it. Uh, just to describe how you use all these trace data, we never ever uh, do analysis based on this. Uh, what we tend to want to do is use them in a, a, a two-dimensional contour plot. Shows you all the shot information put together. Um, you can do this by just, uh, we can open up a, a pre-created project file uh, called a demo file in this particular case. Here yeah, we've already created uh, quite a number of lines with quite a number of shots on each one of them and data on, on each shot. As you can see, uh, you can select any one of the lines that you want to uh, have a look at all, all the shot points together and you say I'd like to create a contour map of that and uh, you draw the image and it spits out something like this. So basically you can see your electroseismic information as a uh, cut of the earth. Basically here's uh, the distance that you've moved. In this particular case uh, it's uh, 250 meters to a depth of 250 meters uh, to bring out the uh, structures of the aquifers, you can just basically drop the sensitivity a little bit and re-render it. So yeah, you can clearly see there's an aquifer around about 10 meters, uh, there's another one around about uh, 42 meters and another one around about 100, uh, 110 meters. In this particular uh, model there was a dike that was done across and you can clearly see the dike basically blocked out all the aquifer activity. So the best place to drill in this particular circumstance would probably be at your high peak values on the side here next to the dike or you can uh, drill next into these aquifers alongside the other side of the dike. Uh, 
We can also uh, bring out a little bit more of a modern view of, uh, of the graph by uh, making a three-dimensional surface where you can tilt and you can actually see the peaks where the, the electroseismic signals are the strongest. Uh, to uh, see sort of a site view of all of um, your, uh, your lines put together, all the points in a, in a particular survey, you can uh, also do a thing called a ISO surface map, which is basically a, a 3D visualization of all your information. What it does is it uh, takes into consideration all the points um, in a grid and then displays them uh, graphically as a 3D rendering at a specific layer. So uh, we draw it in this particular demo model and it spits out an answer. Now if you uh, zoom in uh, to this image you can see that uh, there are certain areas in the in the grid plot that's a little bit stronger than others and it spits out these layers but uh, to get a generalized view of um, uh, your aquifer system you would ideally want to see a little bit more so we basically drop the sensitivity to something that um, will show you a bit more information on the aquifer systems in the map and you redraw it so now we're looking directly from the top of the site down onto the site and uh, we can see here three distinct aquifer systems um, uh, that we can uh, go and investigate. Uh, a number of times to make this a little bit more user friendly what you would want to do is overlay some sort of uh, site image uh, or some sort of map on top of it so that you've got some sort of perspective relative layer. The way that we do this is by importing some sort of a satellite image or a map image um, in, into, the, into the software. Uh, we've already created a geo-referenced uh, um, aerial fit, uh, photograph of uh, this particular site. And uh, we draw the picture again. And uh, what we can see now is that we've got a uh, satellite image of the site uh, with the certain buildings and uh, you've got your aquifer systems underlaid on top of that so you've got some sort of spatial reference to that. Uh, once you've got that you can uh, go to the specific place, a building or whatever and uh, do a little bit more in-depth investigation should you need to do that. You can also um, have a look at the uh, image from a uh, 3D perspective. Where are the aquifers sitting with depth underneath? and uh, basically build up uh, some sort of an idea of uh, aquifer mapping on a particular site. So that's basically how it works and it can be done by a little wee person sitting on a trailer, Alex. It's going to, if, if, if it's that accurate, it's going to revolutionise dry land? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's going to take away the, the factor of the main cost of drilling and, and not knowing guesswork and then or else drilling and, and finding there's no water there. Or else, as some people do, you know, they'll drill and, and uh, that, well, happened, it's happened a number of times, we'd say, oh, we'll just go one for luck, one more time, and they find water. Well, how many times do you say, don't do it, and you miss out? And this equipment will just show you, hopefully, that it, it'll show you that it's either there or it's not. And that's what you really need, because with all due respect, pieces of wire may work in some, in some situations. Oh, I suppose willow sticks and pieces of wire, yes, they've, they've, they've worked, but sometimes they haven't worked either. So, I mean, who it's knows? Science There's a bit of guesswork. Whereas, hopefully, as I say, uh, this equipment will, will, without doubt, be able to tell you if there's, not, if there's not water there, it'll tell you. So, therefore, you know you don't have to waste money drilling. And if there's a chance that there is water there, then you go ahead. Loaded question, but if you were buying dry land now, would you put a clause in the sales and purchase agreement that you want a survey done? Well, you'd, yes, you'd either do that or else you'd ask, ask and say, can I get these people to come in to check if there's water there? And indeed, incredible technology. Good thing is, they did find water and quite a lot of it.